the humble Amiga 500, the workhorse of the Amiga range, and the entry-level machine that kids and teenagers had in their bedrooms all around the world. Very reliable, but in 2022, a stock Amiga 500 isn't all that exciting. So today, we're going to be pimping the Amiga 500 with a flash new crystal case and checking out the latest developments in the world of Pi Storm. And this video is sponsored by my wonderful friends at Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build your beautiful online presence. So in these days of A500 minis, super fast FPGA devices, souped up accelerators for Amiga 1200s, many Amiga fans of today got machines that are way beyond our 90s wildest dreams. And it is easy to forget the most common and popular Amiga, the lowly Amiga 500. Now, even though the A500 was my first ever Amiga, I must admit, I am guilty of not really using it all that much these days. My expanded Amiga 1200 suits most of my retro gaming and old school Amiga program uses, and I must be honest, going back to that original experience of using a one megabyte floppy based Amiga 500 is pretty painful in 2022. I've definitely been spoiled by the modern conveniences that we've got available these days. But that's not to say that the A500 can't compete, and I've always quite liked the look and the design of the Amiga 500. Sure, it is a desk hogger, it's a big machine, but I like the angular features, the sleek lines, and the look of it is very nostalgic for me. But I think we can treat this slightly yellowing old A500 to a bit of an update, thanks to the fine folks at A1200.net. Now, I have covered their Amiga 1200 replacement cases in previous videos, and they've actually got a whole range of new colours that will be coming in their Asahi series in the second half of this year. So you can check their website, A1200.net, if you want to keep an eye on that. And they've kindly sent me one of their very limited edition crystal cases for the Amiga 500. Now, these sell for €179, Euros, but the thing is, they're never making any more after the current small batch sells out. And as with their previous cases, they come in this very cool packaging that is very reminiscent of the classic Commodore Amiga boxes, just missing the Commodore branding because, well, you know, copyright. And it does have some nice features over the original Amiga 500 case. Now, of course, the main thing is it is totally transparent. And I did like that era of transparent technology. You know, everyone was doing it in the late 90s and early 2000s, and I think it needs to come back. And the case has got a load of enhancements, such as a new right-hand side trapdoor to ease access to HDMI, USB and micro SD cards. There's also a rear trapdoor for RJ45 adapters, and one thing I really like about these new cases is that they have metal threads for the screws, meaning it's a lot more reliable than the old Amiga cases. And inside, there's additional mounting points for Raspberry Pis and Apollo boards as well. And luckily, transplanting the A500 motherboard, keyboard and floppy drive into here is a pretty straightforward affair. Pretty much take your Amiga 500 apart, remove all the screws, and reassemble it inside the A500 crystal case. So through the magic of editing, there we go. And we can do the same with the mouse as well. And I've got to say, I think this looks really cool. It would be nice if they made some transparent keycaps at some point as well. That would really complete the look and, you know, make it look like your Amiga is made out of ice or something. Very cool. And the bottom of the case has got some nice touches too, including some Amiga Legends signatures, and I like this nicely ventilated trapdoor cover as well. And lastly, we can add on the lovely metal badge that they include. So with the crystal case, we are well on our way to getting our pimped up Amiga 500. Now the aesthetics, I think, nicely customized, that's good. Now the problem is, we need to take care of just having one floppy drive and one megabyte of RAM. That was fine in 1991, but to be honest, I can't be dealing with that today. Now, there are lots of modern accelerators available for the Amiga 500, and I did consider putting something like an 030 Terrible Fire card in there, which would have made for a nice gaming rig, 
but my Amiga 1200 and my CD32 have already got that taken care of and we're supposed to be souping this thing up as much as we can. So I'm going to revisit a solution that I covered about a year ago when it first arrived and that is the Pi Storm. Now I'll link up the original video I did on this but basically you use an adapter to plug a Raspberry Pi into the Amiga 500 CPU socket. And then you can emulate a faster CPU, loads of extra RAM, you can use an SD card as a hard disk for the Amiga, and even output HD video using the Raspberry Pi's HDMI port. And you can use a Pi's Wi-Fi to get your Amiga online. And there have been some very interesting new developments in the Pi Storm community since I covered it over a year ago. Now you might remember in my original video, we emulated the Amiga 68K processor using an emulation environment that was hosted on Linux. And it did run pretty well for an initial version, but it wasn't without faults. And obviously running emulation on a host operating system is always gonna give you a bit of a performance hit. But this year, there is a new emulation solution available for the Pi Storm that runs directly on the Pi hardware, bare metal if you like, and it's called MU68. Now this project is open source and created by Michael Schulz, although if you want to support his work, and you should, he's got a Patreon link from his GitHub page, and he's got a long history of working with the Amiga, including the Aros Next Gen Amiga operating system that I covered on this channel recently. He helped out with Amiga compatibility there, so he's got a really good history of doing this. And we should get a lot more speed out of this than the previous solution as there's less overhead and complexity and MU68 uses just-in-time emulation of the 68K series. And as I mentioned before, because it doesn't rely on a hosted operating system, this runs directly on the Pi hardware. So I'm very excited to try this out. We're going to get MU68 installed on the Raspberry Pi and we'll see what progress has been made on the Pi Storm over the last year and really pimp up this Amiga 500 next and just before we leap into that part of the video let's take a quick second to give a massive thank you to today's sponsor the incredible squarespace now i'm actually a massive fan of squarespace i've used it as my personal website builder and host of choice for over a decade already and if you're like me someone who hasn't got the best web design skills squarespace makes everything simple using their powerful website builder and their gorgeous custom templates it's all drag and drop squarespace makes it incredibly easy for anybody to get their own great looking SEO optimized website either for personal use or for your business and you can even run stuff like email campaigns using Squarespace as well so I'd love you to try Squarespace out for yourself and I've got you a free trial so if you use my exclusive link squarespace.com slash Dan Wood of course you'll be helping out my channel by using that set your website up and then when you're ready to launch it you'll get a massive 10% off your first purchase of a website or a custom domain and a big thank you to Squarespace for their support support of my channel. Okay, so the crystal case has been temporarily opened again to install the Pi Storm, and it really is as simple as removing the Amiga 68K CPU from the A500 and placing the Pi Storm with a Raspberry Pi connected into the CPU socket. And for the software side of it, well, you can of course set up the MU68 environment yourself, and there are some very detailed instructions available, which I'll link up in the video description, or you could be like me and take the lazy route and run a pre-built distribution. Now, previously on the channel, I've covered things like the Coffin OS for the Vampire and Pi Mega for the Raspberry Pi, and there is a similar build of MU68 for the Pi Storm called Caffeine OS. Now this is a 32 gigabyte card image that you can simply write to a blank SD card and then it is pretty much plug and play. And in here you'll find it's packed with abandonware. Now I'm saying that in air quotes because obviously legally you should always own anything you run and a good time to remind you to support Amiga companies that still exist today and still continue development. And the Amiga Kickstart ROMs are of course still copyrighted and available for sale. So the cheapest way to get these legally is by buying the Amiga Forever Essentials collection that you can pick up for under two pounds and you get all the different ROMs that you need legally that way. And the Caffeine OS distribution itself is freely available. Now, there are people on Etsy and eBay scammers who will try and charge you for it. Don't pay them. This is a free distribution. So I've written it to the SD card, and then we can put that into the Pi Storm and boot up the Amiga 500 for the first time. Now, by default, 
Caffeine OS is set to display via the Raspberry Pi's HDMI output. And of course, there is a mounting point for an HDMI port on the crystal case. So what I'll probably do is get a male to female adapter and place that in the side of the case here to make it easy to connect. Although, you'll also want to have a monitor that can display the Amiga's standard video modes. So if you had a TV with a SCART input and HDMI, you could then attach both and change inputs between them, or you could rock it old school and go dual screen like me. Now I'll keep this CRT attached, and that way when I play native Amiga games or demos, they will appear on the CRT. And for the rest of the output, you'll notice that it's running in 720p with a 16 million color palette available. Now, I've got to say, this is a very sexy looking workbench for an Amiga 500. And actually, it's not strictly workbench as they're running directory Opus, a very powerful workbench replacement for Caffeine OS. And there is a handy dock at the bottom of the screen with a bunch of pre-configured shortcuts here. And we've got a start menu as well with a few handy things on there too. Now, one very cool thing about this is that you can actually mount the Raspberry Pi's boot drive directly. So that means if you need to make any edits to the config files, it is very useful to do it directly on the Amiga. So if you run into stuff like display problems or you want to change something in the config file, rather than having to put the SD card into a PC to edit it, you can simply mount it and edit it from here. And they offer a few different themes as well, which is a very nice touch. Now you can select which one suits your needs best, depending on what you're going to do with your Amiga, from the Karma Selector, as they call it. Now the standard theme is called Caffeine Blue, or we've got a kids version, which is heavily weighted towards games. And there's even a standard screen mode one, if you'd rather just use your Amiga standard display output instead of the Raspberry Pi's HDMI. But obviously then your workbench is going to be a lot lower resolution. And you'll also notice a bunch of networking options on the start menu as well, which unfortunately at the time of recording this video don't work natively on the Raspberry Pi. But I did read on their Discord that the team is currently working on a Wi-Fi driver for the Pi. So hopefully soon, You'll be able to connect your Amiga wirelessly using the Raspberry Pi. But for now, everything in here is set up for a device called a Plip Box. And luckily, I've got one of these. And it is just an inexpensive parallel port based device, which you can connect to the Amiga and then connect an Ethernet cable to. And then you'll find everything in here is all plug and play. Now, by default, it uses an old Amiga TCP IP stack called Miami. But there's also a 30 minute limited demo of a modern suite called Roadshow included, which is definitely worth buying to support continued development. But I've got to say, using this, I think, is the easiest I've ever got an Amiga online. It's all plug and play. And considering that this is running via a parallel port, this has got to be one of the most responsive Amiga web experiences I think I've ever had. And they include a demo version of the latest Amiga web browser, iBrowse. A new version of this was released only a few months ago, and it is great for downloading files, and even basic web surfing works pretty well here as well. And obviously, you can use services like FrogFind that are designed to help older machines display modern websites. And from the menu, you can also mount FTP sites and even your network shared drives as well. Very handy. And I'm not going to go through everything that's included here, but there are some Amiga staples in this distribution, like Hippo Player, which is a classic mod file player. And there is a bunch of mod files included too. And we've got Reaver, which I've got to say, this is a pretty mind-blowing demo. First time you run this. Running on an Amiga 500, you can actually watch video using the Pi Storm. And even better, you can watch them full screen. Now, I'm going to change to just point a camera at the monitor at a slight angle here to uh, hopefully avoid the video being taken down. And I know the grunt of this is, of course, being done by the Raspberry Pi, but there is still something very impressive about seeing a machine made in 1987 displaying full screen video on the Amiga workbench. And I think, you know, with some good scripting and the Wi Fi driver, it is very possible that you could stream video, maybe even watch YouTube on your Amiga 500, which would be an insane demo. And you get loads of classic Amiga programs like paint packages and image editors included as well. There are directories containing audio tools and players and internet radio streams. We've got developer tools, internet tools, and uh, some very nostalgic tools included here as well. And these all run really well. 
And I can already read the comments from people asking for sysinfo screens. So this is what we get running, the sysinfo benchmarking tool. And we get that very sexy red bar that, according to this program, tells us that the Pi Storm is running at 1,373 times the speed of a standard Amiga 500. So that is quite the acceleration that we've got there. And I will show some more comprehensive benchmarks at the end of the video. And there's a decent sized demo collection included as well with some high-end recent Amiga demos that are made for more demanding machines. And there are some classic all-time famous Amiga demos from back in the day, which again, all seem to work really well on here. And that leads us to a question I know lots of people will have. What about the games? Now, I know that last year, some people did have issues running games on the original Pi Storm setup. People had issues with lag and games not running at the proper speed. So you might be interested to see how compatibility works running MU68. And I've got to say, from playing a bunch of games that are included here for a while, they all appear to run perfectly. Now, that's not to say that you might not come up against some that won't work properly. But to be fair, that's also the case if you're using something like an Amiga 1200 or an Amiga 4000. Not all Amiga 500 games work properly. But compatibility here and speed-wise, it seems to be pretty comparable to an Amiga 1200 experience. So hopefully having this bare metal emulation will mean that it's a lot more suitable to build Amiga gaming setups with. Now, there's so much included here that it would literally take me hours to go through everything that's included in Caffeine OS. But I've got to say, first impressions are that this seems to iron out most of the complaints that I think people had with the Pi Storm last year. And using MU68, I think it's definitely going to be keeping its place inside my pimped out Amiga 500. The only downside I can see is that Raspberry Pis are in such short supply at the moment due to the component shortage. So that's likely to be your biggest stumbling block for now, with people charging crazy prices for Raspberry Pis on places like eBay. But hopefully, it won't be too long until they're back on the market at affordable prices. And then, a Pi Storm using MU68, this solution, I think, is going to be one of the most preferable and affordable and most powerful ways that you can max out your classic Amiga with a nice mixture of mod cons and retro stuff in there as well. And I can tell that an incredible amount of work has gone into making Caffeine OS. So at the moment, if you want to get hold of this, I can already anticipate the comments, you need to get it via Discord, but I will link up the creator's channel in the video description so you can reach out to them to get hold of it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of pimping out the Amiga 500. I've got to say, really happy with this setup using this gorgeous crystal case and the Pi Storm using MU68 and Caffeine OS. So if you want to read more about these solutions and the case as well, I'll link all the information in the video description. And just a quick reminder that if you enjoy my videos here on YouTube, I do a weekly retro gaming podcast with new episodes released every Friday, rounding up the week's retro gaming and technology stories and speaking to a veteran of the video games industry on each week's show. And you can get that from your favorite podcast app, ask your smart speaker to play the Retro Hour podcast or head to our website at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, here are another couple of my videos I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.